Hi, this is Shazad from First Drive, and today I'm going to teach you how to put together the two-seat Jeep slash Defender. Now, what we're going to go over is that there's additional parts over here inside your hood. Over here, you're going to find several other pieces. Okay, before we start, we want to make sure the car power is on. In order to do so, I know you have a few loose pieces underneath the hood, but what really matters right now is this terminal over here and this red terminal over here on the battery. You want to remove the protective plastic piece and plug in the power cable over here and make sure your car power is on. So next, what we want to do is to put all the trim pieces on. This includes our kick panels and our fenders. So now we're going to place the rear right into place. And remember, try to use a hand screwdriver so you could actually feel the screws, uh, screws going in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put on the kick panels. Now these kick panels, one will have an R, one will have an L. Look on the side that you're working with. I'm gonna start working with the right side first. Three tabs over here, one, two, and three, which are gonna line up down here, one, two, and three. And then you're gonna follow that up with three screws, one, two, and three. And we're going to repeat on the next side. Next, we're going to work on the support bars. Now they're going to go right about here and here. So we want to take out these eight screws, put the bar in place and replace them. After we take out the eight screws, we're going to go ahead and put these bars into place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my hand tool because when I'm putting them in, I just want to make sure I feel the threads when I'm putting them in and then just tighten it all up and repeat on the next side. Next, we're going to go ahead and assemble the front bumper. So we need this front bumper trim over here, the mustache, that's what I call it, and the two lights over here. Now behind the bumper, you have four screws, but we're going to first start by taking those out. Next, we're going to go ahead and put the light into the front bumper. It's going to be a second hole over. You slide it in, and as you're sliding it in, you're going to see a screw hole over there. We want to make sure our holes line up, and then you're going to put the screw right back in. And we'll just go ahead and fit it through that hole. I'm going to line it up, place the screw right in. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach the front bumper to the car. So over here, this line matches up with here. These lights will match up over here and these tabs will go into this area. After we got this bumper in place and it's uh, snapped in a little bit from the bottom area, we wanna start putting in these screws over here. After you're done with those two, we're gonna do the, these four top screws over here. After we get these two in, these two ones require the longer screws that you can find right over here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and attach the rear bumper. In order to do so, we have two holes over here. On the bumper, it's one and two, and they're gonna go into these two slots right over here, one and two. And we're gonna put two of our screws right in there. After you completed these two screws, you have five more screws to go in this rear bumper. One, two, three, four, and then there's gonna be one directly down here that goes right into the rear bumper. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put in the rear axle. Now, if you notice, we have four screws on the left side and four screws on the right side. We first, need, we need to take them out. After those pieces are out, now this doesn't matter which side you put it on, you just have to just put it right in, wiggle it into the holes, or adjust it on the bar as needed for it to land into the holes, and put the, put the screws right back in. Next, we're going to work on the front axle assembly. Now in order to do that, you need these two pieces over here 
and you need to unscrew another eight screws over here. After we have those four screws taken out, we're gonna go ahead and put these pieces into place and screw them in with the screws we just took out. Next, after we have these pieces in place, we have another eight screws. We're gonna take these out and we're gonna put the front axle in place. After that, we're gonna go ahead and put our steering rod in before we put the axle on. So the steering rod will go right through this hole and this uh, piece, the flat piece, will go right into the cog, like so. After we do that, we're gonna go ahead and put the front end assembly, or the front axle, right on top and make sure it goes into these slots as well. And then you're just gonna wiggle it in and put the screws back in. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the motors. Now the motors have two letters on them, L's and R's. Make sure the L's go on the left side where it says L and R's go on the side that says R, the right side. We're gonna start off with the right side. Now it doesn't matter if a motor is in the front or the rear, as long as they're on the correct side. So what you wanna do is get one of the included wrenches and we're gonna go ahead and twist the nut right off. We're gonna keep one washer on we're gonna move the motor in, and the, we want the motor to go through this hole right over here. At that point, we wanna go underneath the bar, and there's another connector over here. We're gonna plug in the power for the motor. From there, you get my wheel and my plastic piece, and slide that right on. Make sure the wheel goes right into the cog. Next, we're gonna put on the rear wheels. In order to do so, we want to go ahead and take off one of the nuts, keep one washer on there. We're gonna put the motor on. Make sure you put the right, uh, right side, uh, the left side on the left side, right side on the right side. Put that right through, followed by your wheel. Now you're just gonna lightly put it in here, but now here's the thing, if you notice, there's not a lot, whole lot of room for me to really work with it. What you can at least do is pull on the bar a little bit and give you a little more room on this wheel to work with. You're gonna tighten both of them at the same time. After that, you go ahead and you're gonna put in the simulated hubcap pieces. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the steering wheel. Now make sure you install this properly because if you don't, like and your kid pulls the steering wheel, the cable may rip. Now, we're first gonna connect the steering wheel cable by plugging it right in here, like to the cable that goes to the car. And what that does, it controls your horn button. It doesn't really affect that the actual functionality of the car, but affects your kid's ability to use the horn. Make sure it's right side up. Now you also have a screw already in here. One's round and one's a hexagon. We're gonna go ahead and take out your steering wheel screw. And then we're gonna install the steering wheel. Make sure your steering wheel is right side up. Your wheels are straight. It just makes life a lot easier. And you wanna wiggle your steering wheel in until it goes through the bar and you can see it from the other side. Now, with this particular car, you may have to press on that steering rod a little bit to bring it up a little more. Now that I did that, the light is now showing right through. I'm gonna go ahead and place the nut on the hexagon side while I put the screw on through the other side. And I'm gonna put the, the nut on the hexagon side so it holds the nut in place, and I'm just gonna screw it in. And as you can see, it holds, it doesn't come off, 
therefore you will not damage the cable. Next, we're gonna start and install the bar that pretty much goes right onto the dashboard. In order to do so, you just place it over here, you just press it right in. Okay, so make sure the screws are facing upwards towards the windshield. After that, you wanna install the windshield. Over here, you have one, two, three, four, five different notches. You're gonna go ahead and line them up with the notches, and you're just gonna go ahead and press it down into the car. Next, we're gonna install the side view mirrors. You're gonna make sure the reflective side is facing the back of the car. And all you have to do over here, side view mirror goes right into the hole and snaps right in. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the rear motors to the power of the car. What we wanna do is look where the rear motors came in. As you can see, this is one cable, and the second cable is right over here. The shorter cable will go to the left motor, actually to the right motor that's on that side. You'll be able to see because it's just not gonna stretch to the other side. You connect it, while this motor will connect to the one that's farther away. Next, we're gonna go ahead and uh, install the rear seat. Make sure the seat belt is pulled straight forward away from you. When installing the seat, you have these two hooks over here and you're gonna want them to go into these two slots. After your seat is in place, you get the two black pegs. And you're gonna go ahead and just insert them right into the seat and you're gonna turn them 90 degrees. There we go. And your seat is installed. Next, we're gonna install the, uh, the rear cage that goes above the car. You're gonna wanna make sure these holes face the rear of the car. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and put in this one over here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the top bar. You wanna make sure that these, uh, these holes are going upwards on the bar as well. You're pushing them in. After you install that top bar, we wanna install the four simulated lights. In order to do so, you just make sure you just put them on top and they snap into place. Now the final part that you wanna install is that rear wheel over here. What we wanna do is that we have these rear slots over here. And you go ahead and just slide it into place, like so. Now this doesn't open up, so please don't open that. Now we have the car fully assembled. We're gonna go ahead and insert the batteries into the controller. First, we unscrew the back of the controller, like so. We're gonna go ahead and take off this piece over here. And we require two AAA batteries, which are not included. Once we get our batteries, we pop them right in. And we pop back on the back cover and put the, uh, put the screw back in. Now, in order to pair the controller, we wanna hold the up and down arrows over here and wait for the lights to start blinking on the remote control. Once it starts blinking, we power on the remote control and it should turn solid. Once it's solid, make sure the switch is on RC mode and the car will go left and right and be able to be controlled. Okay, the features of this car, we have RC and manual mode. Switch to manual mode when you want your child to drive. RC mode for when you want to use remote control. You have high speed and low speed. Uh, low speed, you might want to use low speed if it's too fast for your child or if he's jerking their head too much. Forward uh, to go forward, reverse to go in and backwards. And here we have a light switch that controls the front headlights. And then we have uh, the horn over here. And this is your next track button, just in case you're listening to Bluetooth audio or you're listening to the music. Over here, we have the music over here, which will change the mode back to the music mode. Volume up, volume down, play and pause. Over here, we have doors that open and close. Pretty much push open, push close. And lastly, we have the charging port located right under the seat over here. Keep in mind that if the charger is plugged in, the car will not power on under first use, you want to charge about six to eight hours, and if you did not use it for a month, it's best to charge again for six to eight hours. I hope this video was helpful. If 
you have any questions, feel free to message us at First Drive and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks again.